The Athos line promises three things. Exceptional, lightweight, perfectly balanced ride been designed with a perfect combination of ultimate ride fast field, and light road race bike. With Shimano decades, and you have the lightest frame out there. KOM, light frame. Light and light 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 If you're just a daily rider, bike weight doesn't really matter. Or at least it matters in ways that you're probably not thinking and it's not the most important thing. The bike industry likes to assume that everybody that rides a bike is a professional bike racer. And pretty much no matter where you go, people are going to be making a big deal about bike weight when it really doesn't matter that much. It's even such a big deal that non-cyclists know to ask, how much does your bike weigh? And that a lighter bike equates a nicer bike for whatever reason. But unless you're a professional bike racer, that's a load of baloney. And here's what really matters for your bike in terms of daily riding. I swap out parts so frequently on my bike that I don't even know how much my bike weighs. Nor does it matter, but just for fun, 58 centimeter completely steel wobby special with no carbon components and no weight weenie components whatsoever. Oh my gosh, is 20 pounds and three ounces. Wowie zowie, which is 9.16 kilograms. Wow, oh my gosh, that's so light or not. <laughs> bike weight doesn't really matter, especially if you're just a daily rider, you're a bike commuter, you ride your bike for fun, and you're not competing for thousands and thousands of dollars in the highest tier races in the world. Because they say that the heaviest part of any vehicle is the engine. And on a bicycle, that is you and I, that is the engine. Look, my bike weighs 20 pounds. If I were to lose five pounds of weight from my bike, I would have to spend thousands of dollars, make the bike less safe and make the bike less reliable. Compare that to the engine. I've been eating one meal a day for the past three weeks and I've lost six pounds already. The weight of the bike is only a very small percentage compared to the weight of the entire system. And the biggest place that you can lose weight is yourself. I could physically lose 20 more pounds. I cannot physically lose 20 more pounds of bike. There would be no bike left. The bike weight is insignificant and minuscule compared to your body weight. A lot of people like to equate that lighter bikes are faster, lighter bikes are nicer, whatever that means. What I can tell you is that lighter bikes are generally more expensive, assuming they still have all the parts on them. And lighter bikes, true, are faster in some situations, not all situations. Lighter bikes can be faster for people that are climbing a lot because you don't have to put as much force to get this mass of a bike up a grade. And they can also be faster when you are accelerating really quickly and that fraction of a second of your acceleration really matters to you. Look, I got a B minus in AP physics and which mostly says that I understand the concepts but I can't do the math. But here's the formula for momentum. You will have more momentum the more mass your bike has. That's just physics. <laughs> a lot of people like to think heavier bikes are worse than lighter bikes, but there's a whole lot more that goes into the way a bike rides and how fast it is than just the weight itself. Look, I've ridden a lot of bikes on this channel. I've ridden some bikes that are heavier than others. I've ridden some bikes that were lighter than others, sometimes by a lot. And the ones that I personally like the most have pretty much no correlation with the weight. There are heavy bikes that I've liked, there are light bikes that I've liked, there are heavy bikes that I didn't like, and light bikes that I didn't like. There's a lot of factors that goes into a bike's ride quality, and a lot of factors that are more important than the weight. A word that a lot of cyclists throw around because it's quite useful is planing, which describes how a bike flexes with your pedal stroke and with the road vibrations or wherever you're riding and basically bikes that plane well. You feel like you're synchronized with the bike and the bike even like encourages you to keep pedaling, kind of like a boat riding waves. But on the other hand, a bike that doesn't plane well, it feels like the bike is fighting you with each pedal stroke, kind of like a, a boat like bouncing and crashing 
through waves rather than smoothly sailing through them. My Wabi Special is the best planing bike that I've ridden. And yes, the bike's weight does affect that, but it's also the entire design of the bike and how it's built. From the dimensions of the tubes, how thick they are, where the thickness and the thinness of the tubes are, the geometry of the bike, and what parts I'm putting on it. In addition to how heavy I am and how much force I'm putting through the pedals and what my own personal preferences are. And that's the beautiful thing about bikes. There's a bike for everybody, but what I like may not necessarily be what you like because we each have our different preferences. And my preference is to tell you that this video is sponsored by Wabi Cycles. This is the best riding bike I've ever ridden. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about them. But unlike what the bike industry likes to try to convince people, bike weight isn't this evil that should be minimized at all costs. There can be good uses for bike weight, like my accessories, my computer, my lights that allow me to be seen and not be hit by a car. This is bike weight that I am definitely keeping on my bike. It's useful to have this weight on my bike. Or even looking at it from another direction, like I like fixed gear bikes because they're just fun to ride. But a road biker is never going to get rid of their derailers and their cogs and their chain rings to make their bike lighter because that wouldn't make them faster necessarily. That is useful bike weight. But also you can have things like racks, panniers, baskets, things that add utility to your bike that allow you to carry stuff on your bike and use it for getting groceries, carrying stuff around. Because a bike is about getting from point A to point B, not necessarily how fast you're going depending on what your needs are. But if you take shaving grams to the extreme, especially if you're just a daily rider, that could have negative impacts on how safe your bike is. Like if you're starting to have every component be carbon fiber on your bike, that makes it way less safe to ride. It's less crashable. It's not as worthy of being locked up. It's not as durable. And that's where weight can really be useful. Bike weight can be a good thing. <laughs> or if you ride in the rain a lot and you need full fenders for your bike, that can make you way drier, way more comfortable, have way more fun, and even make you faster. Yeah, I know, crazy. Bike weight can make you faster. You can even see that at the professional level, depending on what course they're riding for the day. If there's not a lot of climbing, a lot of riders will opt to ride an aerodynamic bike, which weighs more, has more material to make the wind go around the bike better. It's faster than the as light as possible bike, depending on the conditions. What actually matters for daily riding is not bike weight, but just, is it fun to ride? Whatever that may be for you. When I first started riding bikes, I would take any bike. Does it go? It's faster than walking, I'll ride that bike to school. But maybe you have some other criteria. Most people would think a bike should be comfortable to ride and be able to go the places that you want to ride. But maybe you like a geared bike. Personally, I like a fixed gear bike. It's just more fun and that's just personal preference. Or maybe you need racks and panniers and fenders. Maybe you don't. Maybe you like the clean and super minimal aesthetic of a fixed gear bike. Is the bike pretty? That could be a factor that's important to you. But the important thing is that it's fun for you to ride because unless your bike is fun, it's just gonna sit in the backyard and collect dust. And a super important thing, especially for us daily bike riders that aren't racers, is are our bikes reliable? Because the less time we spend working on our bikes, the more we'll be able to ride them and the more time we'll be able to spend riding them and having fun. Are the parts on your bike easily serviceable? Do they use standards that are standard? Is it easy to swap parts out? Is it easy to get replacement parts for? Is it easy to work on and accessible and well-designed in terms of the lifetime use of the bike itself? And also, if you're going places and doing things on your bike, it should be lockable. Like, you can leave it and not worry about it getting stolen. If you're worrying about your bike getting stolen, you probably spent too much on your daily bike. <laughs> I am like borderline in that category. <laughs> At the end of the day, most people that ride bikes in the world are not professional racers, nor do we want to pretend that we are professional racers or spend the money on professional racing equipment. <laughs> and we have extremely different needs than a professional bike racer who is 
and probably should be concerned with bike weight. Bike weight does matter for us daily riders, but only in the sense that the bike is well designed, the weight is taken into account to make it fun and reliable to ride. In the wise words of Reggie fils of Nintendo, if it's not fun, why bother? Speaking of fun, this video is sponsored by Wobby Cycles. <laughs> My Wobby Special is the most fun bike that I've ever ridden, and part of that isn't just the weight. The weight does matter, but the way Wobby's bikes are designed is very holistic. They look at every single thing to make sure that it gives you the best ride quality for your money as possible. Wobby's fixed gear and single speed bikes are constructed with a mostly road-like geometry that's slightly more aggressive for the preferences of us fixed gear riders because most of us that are buying fixed gear bikes are riding them on the street anyway. And they help to bring the ride quality to life with very lively, supple, lightweight, I know, it's kind of lightweight, but it's still steel, Reynolds 725 or Columbus Spirit tubing. The way that these tube sets flex, they plane really nicely where it feels like the bike is giving in, it's pliable, but not squishy, but still springing back and giving you a responsive ride quality. Because it is steel, it's durable, it can take a beating, it can be locked up, it can be crashed. I have crashed these multiple times before and they're totally fine. It's the most fun, most reliable daily bike that I've ever ridden. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, be sure to check out Wobby Cycles linked in the description. A fixie famous shout outs to David K, Salvador Lombroso, Julian Corona, Brandon Black, Brent David, Mario Perez, Ted Antri, and Breakless.Illini for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter. So be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.